Hi, everybody. Welcome, welcome to our November Community Education Panel from the Holistic Chamber of Commerce. I am your moderator and host, Lainey Savante Wolken, and I'm just so thrilled. I can't believe we've gone through an entire year of panels. Great topics, and this one is no exception, particularly because of the timing of the holidays being here and the time where people tend to overindulge and maybe not have the self-control we have at other times in the year. So I'm excited about this panel. I'm thrilled to uh, in, introduce you to this incredible group of experts. And just to mention that I am also the co-author along with Joanna Salerno, the Food Healing Oracle Deck, and we are proudly sponsoring tonight's panel. So first off, thank you to Camille Leone and to Leslie and the entire team at uh, headquarters uh, at Holistic Chamber of Commerce. Thank you for this opportunity to allow our members to really strut their stuff, show you what we have to offer in terms of health and wellness and many other uh, uh, modalities and uh, disciplines that the membership offers. So if you're considering membership, please do, because we have a growing, thriving community and we can't wait to introduce you to the 2020, next year's 2022's list of um, community education panels. So let's get started. We have a lot to talk about. How we're going to cram it into an hour-ish is beyond me because wait till you get to know the beautiful people that are here tonight. We're going to start off with Joanna Salerno. Joanna, there's Joanna. Uh, Joanna is a spiritual director, healer, Akashic record reader, co-author of the Food Healing Oracle Deck, and an independent health coach with Optavia. She embarked on her own weight loss journey, having lost 60 pounds, and now shares her wisdom and knowledge with others looking to improve their health and wellness. Welcome, Anna. Say hello. You, <laughs> Where are you coming, calling in from, by the way? I'm in Vineland, New Jersey, which is Vineland, South Jersey. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. All right. Uh, calling in from Hilton Head, South Carolina, we have Laura Shofroth. Laura is an accomplished herbalist, health coach, life coach, motivational speaker, author, and president of the local chapter of the Holistic Chamber of Commerce. Yay! She's also the founder of The Miracle of You, which is a premier health, a holistic health consulting program. And she approaches health in a holistic way. And I'm not even going to read the rest. Just we'll let her tell you what uh, how she approaches it in the next hour. Say hello, Laura. Hello. Hello. Good to be here. Yeah, we're, we're glad that you're here. Uh, last but certainly not least, we have Jeff Berger uh, here from Cape Coral, Florida. Jeff is very accomplished. He's a certified holistic mental wellness health coach. And his passion is education, educating people about holistic protocols that are science-backed and clinically trialed. He shares the importance of our microbiome, which is the gut, brain, heart, access, health, a science that's disrupting the health and wellness industry and its significance to our overall physical and mental wellness. Did I get it all in? I know you have a million more things to say. You got it all in. It's great Good. to be here and to be the token male again. So thank you. Token male. But I tell you, when we 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 always have pre-panel gatherings to discuss what we're going to discuss. Right. And the synergy amongst the four mm -hmm. of us in the wisdom and the knowledge and the ahas and the I, I understands was so incredible. Really, it's just I couldn't wait to dive into the topic tonight. And so what is the topic? The topic is releasing weight, weight loss, uh, throwing in if that gets out of control when diabetes enters one's world. And we're going to talk about it with each uh, each panelist here and have a great conversation. Leah says hello. And by the way, if you are here, make a comment, say hello. We will take questions in the next hour. So please, if there's something that you need to know or you hear you want to know more about, we are here to support you and offer you the best that we can do. Okay. So I'd, I'd like to start off with Joanna and then Laura and then Jeff. And then what, we, what we'll do is just have them introduce yourselves a little bit more and talk um, a little bit about your backstory, kind of, you know, what led you maybe to doing what you're doing and just anything that you're passionate about that has led you to being here and supporting others in their weight loss journey. So Joanna, do you want to begin? Oh, I would love 
I would love to begin. There's so okay. much to share. Um, so when it comes to, uh, you know, of course, uh, a lot of people know my interest in food because of the food healing Oracle deck and my, you know, uh, background in organic gardening and things like that. But what a lot of people may not know is that I have struggled with, uh, with weight issues almost my entire adult life ever since I gave birth to my children. So I can blame them. Right. But uh, through a series, it took me a quite a long time to figure things out. Now, as a healer, I know that and I have learned the uh, association between mind, body, spirit, of course. And I know that there's a lot more that goes into our health than just the physical. Right. But the physical and what we ingest is such an important important aspect, but not just what we ingest as food, but what we ingest in our thoughts, you know, our belief systems, our family patterns, there's so much more. So my journey has taken from probably the time in my 20s, and just learning more and more and more about food, the effects of food. Um, and also as a energetic healer, you know, and a craniosacral therapist, all, everything has built up on top of the other to lead me to find a solution for myself. And I believe each one of us is so unique that we have to find what works for us to have optimum health. What works for one person just might not work for the other. And so through my okay. trial and error uh, of what I've done, I have uh, discovered what works for me. And we're gonna get into that a little bit later, but for now, I am so happy that I feel like I have regained my health in a way that is giving me more energy, more uh, availability to help others. Because as we all know, when we're hurting or we're suffering or we're sick, we're limited in how we can help. So, you know, Food Healing Oracle Deck language, Lainey, and everybody that knows Food Healing Oracle Deck language, it's been pineapple. There's been an expansion, but thankfully not an expansion of my physical body, only an expansion of my knowledge. Wonderful. Awesome. Thank you. All right, Laura, how about you? Yeah, so um, I can appreciate everybody's got a, a background story, and that's definitely what um, brings a lot of people to a healing is the contrast of they've been somewhere before, they didn't like it, and so they have to change it. And myself, like so many people, many of my clients, um, when I was 34 years old, I found myself sick. And at the same time, I was under, uh, we'll probably talk about this later, but a great amount of mental duress. Um, but at 34 years old, I found myself um, syndrome X, which is pre-diabetes, um, found myself with um, digestive issues. So my gut biome was a wreck, but I didn't know it because I didn't know what normal was. And then um, in um, going through all of what was happening um, through some traumatic experiences, I was then diagnosed with an incurable disease. And that was my wake up call. I was only 34 years old. I was not ready for that. And um, I guess I have a little bit of a rebellious heart when the doctors said, listen, you know, you'll live with this. You're not going to die, but we need to do radical surgery and all these medications for the rest of your life, including hormones. And I could only imagine myself growing like a mustache from the hormones. I was terrified. I was like, I don't want to get on the medications. Um, so I took a step back and that began a long, a long, uh, eventually 10 years of research and um, finding out about the body, the gut biome, um, how mental barriers, uh, all kinds of things that all um, kind of bring imbalance to our bodies. And I'm, I'm here to say I'm so happy to be a part of this panel because I, I was once a size 18. I mean, I'm five foot 10 anyway, I'm, I'm tall. But I had after my third children, I was, um, you know, had some weight issues. And that was a lot of that due to my illness and all these other things. So I know and I and I know what people go through. And I know the difficulty. So I do have a message to 
to say today to encourage people and to bring some tools and tips, hopefully, to the table. Well, you look like you're 34 now, so you've got me really confused. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, I was 20 years oh, ago. Oh, my God. Whatever you're doing, you know, I'd like to drink that or eat that. <laughs> uh, well, she set it up perfectly for you, Jeff, because she did talk about the gut and the, um, the biome. So take it away. <laughs> awesome. Great. Yeah, so I relate a lot and resonate with what Laura said in many ways. So I come from a family of type 2 diabetes, and I was actually diagnosed with type 2 diabetes in my 40s and following Western medicine. And Western medicine was um, basically get on medications. And then it got to two medications and three medications and four medications and ultimately up to five. And that was around the time that um, my husband and I moved down to Florida and moved down to Florida and was looking around saying, oh my gosh, because we, we always learned, or I grew up knowing that Florida was God's waiting room, but I got down here and I'm looking around saying, oh my gosh, most of these people are in the waiting rooms of doctors. And so that kind of, you know, set the pace for me saying there's got to be something different. And it was um, like six months later, I was introduced to the Holistic Chamber of Commerce. And it it opened up a the um, Pandora's box, if you will, to a plethora of all kinds of things. Yeah, I heard about holistic stuff back in the day, but I thought it was foo-foo stuff, you know, that goofy magic stuff. But I really was desperate and started to do some due diligence and my own research because my doctor wanted to put me on a sixth medication. And I watched my father die of diabetes, um, heart disease, leg amputation, followed by his sister, then his brother, his youngest brother. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm next. So um, that is when I really decided to take control because when I went into my doctor and I said, I want to get my A1C down to 5.0, which is non-diabetic for those that don't know what the A1C is, it's a blood marker. My doctor's response was, why do you want to do that? So that was the cattle or the straw that broke the camel's back. And it was at that point that I made the decision, I have to take control. And during that, over the last couple of years, I have um, developed a, a, a holistic lifestyle. I've got a lot of learning to do. Um, I'm still working on things because we destroy our body for decades and it's not going to happen overnight. It takes time to repair and mend those, um, you know, our body temple. We only have one to live in. So we need to treat it the, the best way. And um, during that journey, I'm really I'm humbled to be certified as a holistic mental wellness coach because with a concentration in the microbiome, because that's really where all disease starts. It starts in the gut. And I'm really excited to be sharing the information that I know and, and the future um, learning of what I'm going to be doing over the next couple of years. And again, I'm humbled to be here with you three ladies and um, provide a lot of value for our viewers out there. Well, I mean, thank you for all of you sharing your stories. I know my background, I've always dealt with weight issues too, and probably got interested in food uh, early on and took up nutrition and dietetics in, uh, in school and, and got a degree in food science and have been a food healer. But my biggest issue um, has been uh, sugar. And so those cravings and not so much now, now that's all handled, but I thought maybe we can talk about, I mean, we're going to talk about everything tonight from stress and mindset to um, uh, oils to, I mean, you name it, we're going to talk candida, everything. We're talking about it all tonight as much as we can pack in. But I think the, um, the root of all evil is sugar. I have to just say it from the get-go and maybe we can start talking about it from there because that has been for me, um, the Achilles heel. And um, uh, thankfully, I'm on the other side of that. But through the years, uh, I dealt with candida, I dealt with sugar, I have dealt with insulin resistance and everything that comes along with what insulin resistance is. So maybe let's start there is just generally and maybe um, we can start with whoever wants to just talking about what insulin resistance is and what is going on that sugar has been many times said as addictive as cocaine and all these good things. So, uh, bad things. So let's, let's talk about that. And so I don't, you know, whoever Joanna or whoever wants to just jump in, but let's talk about, um, the problem with sugar 
and how why sugar uh, is is really dominating our issues for leading to just about everything we've already talked about. Mm -hmm. Um, anybody, well, we, well, we can go in order as well too. So, well, because I, I, I'll start because of our, our, our diets that we're given, even almost as, as children, right? Like we have pleasure sensors, right? We want to taste things that taste sweet. They do work. We need sweet foods because it helps the brain, right? We need to process, we need to have, uh, we need to have some of that glucose in, but when we put too much in, the body starts breaking down and it is, it doesn't allow us anymore to accept that insulin in our bodies. I'm not a doctor. I'm not an expert on this, but this is just my own understanding of it. And, and by so the way, we are diagnosing here. We're right. not prescribing here. We are just sharing information that is in that we've experienced ourselves personally. All right. So I put the disclaimer out. There. Right. Good. So the, the more that you eat processed foods, you know, and processed carbs, which can turn into sugar and we eat processed sugar or high fructose corn syrup, it starts breaking down your your body and the way that the body can handle all of that. And so for me, and I can only speak from my own experience, what was happening, it didn't matter what I was eating, it was turning it into sugar. It was turning it into fat, I should say. Everything was turning into fat. Getting out of a sugar habit. So just to back up, at age 24, I found the book, William Duffy, Sugar Blues. I started educating myself about sugar. Did that mean I stopped eating sugar? No. I mean, it took me a long time and I would go through different um, cycles where I'd be off all sugars, all processed carbs and all of that. And all of a sudden I would get cravings for the sugar, which I found out later, which is a topic that we're going to cover. It was because of the candida that I had that was actually craving these carbs, these sugars, you know, to feed it because candida lives on sugar and carbs. So I didn't know that then. So it's almost like what comes first, the chicken or the egg, but you have to take care and find the root cause. What is it? Sometimes it's a, it's an emotional thing, especially when we don't have well, any well, yeah, I just want to get to emotional and mental later okay. because, yeah, yeah. So let's yeah. just stay on the topic of sugar, insulin resistance, and candida if we can. And Laura, why don't you jump in in the chat? Yeah, yeah. I, I love what Joanna said. One of the sorry, um, Joanna, I just that's wanna, okay. okay. <laughs> One of the first things I tell my clients um, when they come on board is guess what? Many times it's not your fault. The food, the food pyramid that's been offered to us since the 70s has been all wrong. Let's face it. Um, if you were an American child and growing up in the 60s, 70s, maybe even before, um, our parents were told that convenience foods are great. They're enriched with 21 essential vitamins and uh, iron and all these things. And our parents, bless their hearts, and their parents thought nothing of these convenience foods and then we want to add to that, that mass food manufacturers and the media play on our emotions with commercials that hire actors, actresses, and models to sell their items to mm -hmm. us. That is not food. It's not food. And it's, and we don't know. We just, we're trusting. We're so naive sometimes. And I don't mean that in a bad way because I was there. I had three children, you know. Um, so what happens is that sugar addiction is born, um, especially if we were formula fed when we were toddlers and we were given these foods and already our pancreas was chasing that sugar as we were children. Um, and then the diabolical sort of system sort of began to multiply as we went on through life and we started finding out, well, there's sugar in bread and there's sugar in um, pasta sauce and there's sugar in a can of kidney beans and there's sugar in your TV dinner. And so our bodies have not been able to recuperate from the onslaught if we ate the traditional American diet. Um, and that is why um, so many, well, so we want to add to that, that real quick, that 
any of these white flour foods, many of you probably already know this, but these white flour foods turn to sugar. It turns to a paste in our intestines and we're stuck with that for a while. So that's a whole different story. Um, but this yeah. uh, raises our glucose levels once again. So now you're having mm -hmm. pasta, spaghetti, whatever you're having, and then you're having cheesecake. Your body just took, it. it's like Armageddon. Mm -hmm. And we don't even realize that. So. That um, is the buildup of candida, which is your gut bacteria is way out of whack. All of a sudden you're craving bread, you're craving pasta, as Joanna was talking about. And um, you've got a white coating on your tongue and you don't know why. So um, it's, it's most of America, if somebody has this issue, we know that um, you're not the only one but I'm sure Jeff's going to talk about this. It's going to be going to the gut to heal it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, let's, yeah. let's, yeah. let's talk about the gut. Let's talk about what the microbiome, let's talk about Jeff, just, you know, playing on what we've just talked about, candida, microbiome, sugar, mm -hmm. insulin, all of that. It's all happening in the tummy. That, that is correct. But I'd like to add two things to what Joanna and Laura said. So, because okay. I, I did, I, in, in August of 2019, I lost 60 pounds. I reversed my type 2 diabetes and I came off of five medications. But over the next six to 12 months, I was still dealing with issues of my escalated blood sugar. And I didn't know what was going on. Um, and insulin resistance came to fruition um, about six months ago. And I took a, um, I'm taking a course about insulin resistance. And for me specifically, and, and, you know, it's different with everybody. Um, it's a fat, it's a matter of, for me, it's, it's too much fat. And what I have is too much fat in my cells. And when you have too much fat in your cells, it, it uh, kicks away the insulin that's produced from the glucose and, and the carbs that come into, um, you know, into the, into the bloodstream. And then your cell is supposed to grab that insulin to feed um, energy into it. But for those who are dealing with that, it, it kicks that out. So that's another aspect of um, insulin wow. resistance because I was eating a lot of nuts. Nuts are healthy. Um, I was doing uh, olive oil, virgin olive oil and um, um, avocado oil, a lot of fat. So you're only supposed to have about 10 grams of fat per meal, if not less, but no more than 30 grams a day. The other thing I wanted to mention is Laura talked about these foods and these, these companies and the research that I've done, I, I'm, I'm thoroughly disgusted with this industry because these food companies go out to chemical, chemical companies to find a chemical for their processed foods that is addictive. Yes. And this is what's causing the disruption in the um, in the gut. It's dysbiosis, and you're getting more of the bad bacteria in there. And that bad bacteria is the ones that really crave the bad food. And we got to eliminate that and and bring it to where it's um, you know uh, um, a stable environment. You're you know you've got a good microbiome, um, and the microbiome. So we'll get into that is basically the gut brain heart access. And this is a science that's, as I said, as Laney said, it's disrupting the health and wellness industry. Why? Because Hippocrates was the first who documented way back that all disease starts in the gut. This project that started in 2006 over the last four to five years has been per, um, um, publishing their clinical studies, their, um, um, their research in medical and scientific journals that there is a correlation between the gut. The gut talks to the brain, the brain talks to the heart, the heart talks to the brain, and the brain talks to the gut. So there's the neurotransmitters, 90% of our neurotransmitters and hormones are developed in our gut, which is where the immune system is. And if this is in a dysbiosis and a, in a, in a chaotic environment, that's why we have all the problems that we do today because of the foods that we're eating, the pharmaceuticals, that we're consuming, it's breaking down the three entities, the prime entities that we live in our in our body temple, which are um, human cells, microorganisms, because we have little critters in our body, and our viruses, the virome in our in our body. They feed, and if you're feeding them the right um, nourishment, they work synergistically together, and to live what I call is an abundance and an optimum wellness, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, 
And th that's what um, I'm trying to teach people about. And uh, this is all hidden. That's the other thing. All of this is hidden in mainstream media. Like Laura said, they want, they get these, you know, fancy actors and this and that saying, you know, eat frosted flakes. It's healthy for you. It's, hey, I used to eat frosted flakes in, by handfuls. Now that I know oh, what yeah. I know, I'm like, oh my God. But the processed sugar, the processed sugar is what the killer is. If you, you there's sugar in fruit, there's sugar, you know, yeah. that's good sugar. But the processed food, uh, the processed sugar is what's refined. Really yeah. So I remember uh, back 30 ish years ago when I was in my food science classes, we'd have field trips to, I won't say the names of big companies that are well known that pay a lot of money to advertise. And you'd go through their food science departments and show how they actually do testing and um, how they put things together. And I just remember saying like, I just feel like all of this is like made up food. Like where's the wholeness? Where's the realness? Where's the garden? You know, so, you know, here it is flash forward all these decades later. And now we're, you know, put out a product that is saying nourishment, nourishing wisdom from mother earth when it's just so simple to grow it, pull it off a tree, off a bush and consume it in its natural state. So moving on, I just I, I know there's so much to talk about and this this hour is going to go by fast. And by the way, again, if anyone has questions, please um, go ahead and introduce yourself or ask in the chat. So we've been talking a lot about physical and we'll circle back to physical uh, it, uh, more. But I want to uh, touch back and circle back to where Joanna was starting to go earlier. It, it, and, and that is uh, our emotional wellness in our mental wellness, because mental mindset and um, emotional well-being play a crucial role in what is happening physically. And that it is what comes first, the chicken or egg, is it because we're feeling emotionally, mentally off is that we crave certain foods or our bodies are causing us to crave certain foods. So then we feel emotionally, mentally down because we didn't get the right nourishment. So I'll let you now take it away from there, Joanna. And then you just, we'll just circle around again and get everyone's viewpoints on emotional and um, mental wellness regarding yeah. weight loss and, and health and well being. Well, you know, for me, I think that it, it started as a child when my mother would make a cake or something like that or cookies and the reward would come from that. I mean, as Laura said, totally innocent because they were told certain things, right? So, and, you know, you get in this kind of trick mentally where, or emotionally, where, you know, you uh, want those pleasure centers to be rewarded, right? We want the comfort of mom's cooking. We want the comfort of, you know, a warm chocolate chip cookie. There's something visceral that happens, right? We smell the smells. It's, we know it's going to taste so good. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with an occasional and there's healthy ways to make a chocolate chip cookie mm -hmm. that are better mm -hmm. for you. But there, so that starts up where we're pleasuring ourselves, we're comforting ourselves. It's like that self-soothing. And then the candida kicks in or more stress kicks in. And all of a sudden you're not eating just an occasional chocolate chip cookie or a piece of cake or a chocolate bar. You know, for me, it was like I had to have something sweet after my meals. I had to have something sweet. Now that could have been the candida, but it was also, it could be physiological in the, in the way that my biome was uh, craving these things, but it was also an emotional fix almost, you know, we know sugar is very addicting, but so are processed carbs, the white flowers, like Laura was talking about. Right. And they set up uh, for me that, I didn't feel satisfied unless that part was, was fed in me. And, you know, so first, I think, have it. exactly. And, and, and first I think that it's important to address, you know, the root cause, but there's so many layers of that root cause. It's like peeling the onion. Uh, the most important thing I think is if somebody can just do uh, 
a detox like I did, a, a detox of all white flours, white sugars, processed foods, and things like that. And then you get your body an opportunity to have space, to have healing, right? And the more that you feed good, healthy foods like plant-based foods and good oils, which we'll get into later, the less your body is wanting those processed foods. And then you can work on the emotional and the mental aspects of that once you calm the gut from craving those things. Perfect. Thank you. <clears throat> and I agree. So Laura, why don't you, you know, you said earlier uh, it's not your fault and that, you know, people not lose weight and it's not their fault. So is that part of the stress in the emotional and the mental kind of disruption? Yeah, there's so many different ways that I could go and answer this question because on the one side, the more junk that we eat, the less serotonin we're making in our gut mm -hmm. because our gut's compromised. On the other hand, I do address with my clients exactly what Joanna was saying. We have emotional barriers, every one of us, mm -hmm. whether it's from um, our brother that beat us up or our uh, we had a parent or a relative or we had a teacher that was toxic. So all of us did not probably escape some sort of um, emotional um, uh, disparity as children. But um, add to that, that food has been a reward system for us. You just like Joanna said, in every one of our life, if it's your birthday, you get a cake. If it's if you were got straight A's, you got to go to the ice cream store. Um, if you went to grandma's so house, true. grandma made um, a home cooking. And so we associate that with like Joanna said, comfort and comfort food. Um, and even bad situations like funerals and yes, other situations yes. on, the, on the flip side is also. Mm -hmm. So it's important that to, for people to understand that we can flip that switch. We really can. And I give people this analogy too, and I hope it's empowering for anybody that's listening, but pretend if you are, that you're a little fishy. And you as a little fishy are swimming in a pond with 9 billion other fishies. But then you find out that the pond is polluted. And you, your gills, you can't breathe. You can't get the oxygen that you need. You can't eat healthy food because it's, the pollution is so bad. So you as that fish have to be strong and not be like the rest of the fish. And you need to swim uphill, almost like a salmon, to the fresh spring water. And that is where when you do that, when you separate yourself from the norm, from where the other 9 billion are, and you find that fresh water, you can breathe and you can eat healthier. And um, so it's kind of flipping the switches, being strong from peer pressure, um, but then realizing that you don't have to give in to anything anymore. If it's a work party and it's a potluck and somebody there isn't was like, well, you bring the chocolate cake, Laura. Well, I could bring the chocolate cake. Doesn't mean I have to eat it or I can eat a bite or two and I'm satiated, but there's no peer pressure that I have to do that. Or you can make it in a conscious way. That's true. Reading that you and, and introduce others to um, variations of eating properly, but still getting that nourishment that they were craving. That's right. That's right. Yeah. All right. So, Jeff. so Laura, if you if you have to take brownies to a potluck, I'll send you a recipe for black bean brownies. Yes. Oh. Yes. I absolutely. Love black bean brownies. And let me just say this to end. You know, for anybody who thinks this is hard. It's to eat right. It's not hard. Cancer is hard. Divorce is hard. Loss of a loved one is hard. Mm -hmm. But looking oh, yes. at resources and eat cookbooks that I, I mean, I have some on my website and trying brownies made with black beans or avocado. You won't even know the difference. There's so many great resources right now for you to kind of get away from the unhealthy and try the healthy. And guess what? The the weight will naturally start coming off without you having to struggle for it. And I could almost assure you a hundred percent, I don't want you to shoot me, but almost a hundred percent. If you start changing your foods and eating whole foods instead of the processed junk, your palate sure. will change in less than two weeks. Less well, than Joanna, two weeks. Joanna knows my favorite 
cookies in the world are chocolate chip cookies, but they are vegan and made with tahini and olive oil. Mm. Right? I mean, come there and then they're out of this world. Uh, but anyways, I digress. <laughs> Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, so <laughs> you're getting uh, me hungry. <laughs> so great nuggets from Joanna and Laura. Um, and you know, the other thing too is that over the last 30, 40 years. The world is changing. It's fast paced and moms are not at home with the kids. They're out working just like dads and working two and three jobs. So mm -hmm. the media out there is pushing fast food, fast food and processed foods. Let's make something really quick or throw it in, you know, get a, a microwavable um, dinner. And all of these, we talked about the chemicals, all these chemicals um, in balance what's going on in the gut, but then it also throws the communication up in the brain and throws that um, into overload with anxiety, depression, stress. And this has an impact on what you're thinking. Oh, well, you know, I, I'm stressed out. I need to grab something really quick. And they go, what do they do? They go grab the, um, you know, the fast foods or the processed foods. And during my journey, um, what I've learned and what I've experienced is, and what Laura said, it, when you start feeding your body the whole foods, your body craves for it and mm -hmm. your body will change and it changes relatively quickly. Um, yeah, it took me nine months to do everything that I needed to do, but I'm still on my journey. But mm -hmm. the more you feed your body um, the whole foods and the right um nourishment, then you're going to get more energy. You're going to sleep better. You're going to be physically well and mentally more alert, no brain fog. A lot of those anomalies that are happening with everybody today, because everything is just go, 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 go. Um, and that is something that I think that, and this is where the, the four of us are here along with our, you know, um, cohorts, our colleagues, in this industry, we want to teach people because we have to live, we're living out loud now. We have to, we have to stand on the mountaintops and really shout out to people. Look at, it's like that. What is that? Share movie. Um, she slaps Nick, Nick, what is fit? Uh, what's his face? Snap out of it. Yeah. You know, because um, if you continue on this path, just like myself, I mean, I'm only three years away from my father died. And if you continue on this path, you're going to continue to get worse. And, um, you know, it is a struggle. I know I, I, I dealt with it for 22 years before I made the decision. But I think we're in a place where things are really starting to change. More and more people are waking up to say, wait a minute, this isn't right. We need to do something and, and make some radical changes. And it, it's, it's a day at a time. You don't drop everything in one day. You do incremental steps. And as you do those incremental steps, it just gets better and better and better and easier and easier and mm -hmm. easier. Although I will say that there are many people and maybe even some of you, and I think I even heard that in you, Jeff, there is a tipping point where suddenly something happens that you have this aha and you're like, I'm done. I remember what it was for me recently. I had taken a trip to Albuquerque and I ate my way through that beautiful land of enchantment and anything I can eat. And I was like, you know what? I'm done. And since that moment, I recently just lost 30 pounds and that was it. But everyone I think has that moment where they're like, that's it. I'm not doing one more abusive thing to my body. This next section I want to, and I know I'm watching the time, but I'm going to bundle this all together because they all relate to each other. But there's a lot of talk about free radicals. What are free radicals? What do antioxidants do to help squash the free radicals? And what does that have to do with oils? Oils is a hot topic. Everything's oil, no oil. Vegans don't even do oil, um, some. So I want to combine all that because it's a good subject and I want to at least get a few minutes in um, with everybody to talk about anything you want to talk about in relation to free radicals and what, you know, and the body and what we can do and oils and saturated fats, monosaturated, polyunsaturated. It can be very confusing. And then you have a million different diets out there. And how does that work? So I want to just kind of break down some of these really important lessons that could be tips no matter how you eat 
but to eat sort of in the way where we determine that free radicals are bad and how we can improve mm -hmm. upon them. So Joanna, do you want to start us off kind of in this realm? Yeah. I mean, you know, it's really important to choose the best oils, but it's also important. And Jeff said this, you know, too much fat is not good. I did keto for a while, lots of fat. Right. And, um, and it worked for a minute. And then when it stopped working, I felt really sick because there was too much fat in my diet. So long time ago, I decided that I was only going to use three kinds of fat, maybe, maybe four, because I do use ghee sometimes, right? So, but coconut oil, uh, avocado oil, and olive oil. Then I found out about the free radicals when you heat olive oil too much. So olive oil is reserved for my, a little bit of drizzle on my salads or after I steam a vegetable, a little bit, if I want some flavor, a little bit of drizzle. Baking's okay. Baking's okay, but just not Yeah, on the, baking's on okay with on olive oil, on the, on the, but on not the, the high heat. You know, I used to saute my vegetables in, in olive oil because that's the way my mother did it. She's Italian, right? We did everything in olive oil olive oil, we got them in cans, you know, in my house, right? <laughs> so, so, but, you know, so because I knew that the free radicals were damaging the cells of my body, the very cells of my body were being damaged by these free radicals. And it didn't matter if I put a bunch of supplements in my body, if I was still ingesting things that were causing this cellular damage. So when I decided to use only those oils, then the next step Jeff says everything comes in steps, right? The the next step was making sure I wasn't overdoing it with the oils. And I have found that a little lemon or maybe some flavored vinegars on my salad is just as good, right? And I can drizzle oil for flavor. I don't have to drown things in, in oils. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we have to just be mindful of what we're putting in our body because it can damage uh, our, our cells, hence our vitality, hence the way that we feel. And so, you know, I just try to do the best I can. And I think that those little changes, they don't, they don't feel like big changes. They just feel like little changes. And to me, that's all it takes is one change. Even if you make one change, mm -hmm. just your oils, uh, is, is a big deal. Very nice. Nicely said. Thank you, Laura. Yeah, I agree with jo Joanna. You know, um, free radicals accelerate cell death. I mean, that's just what happens. And um, you want to add to that, that the standard American diet does not allow for enough phytochemicals, which fight free radicals. We know that. So we find phytochemicals in most uh, fruits and vegetables, many uh, fruits and vegetables, we don't eat anywhere near what we're supposed to for our weight. We've not figured that out in most cases. And so that's actually what I teach. Um, but just step one, it, eliminating those processed foods will begin to, and those heated oils like Joanna was talking about, every restaurant in America, unless it's truly like Delicioso, truly a really good, healthy restaurant that they are super focused every restaurant mainstream uses vegetable oils every time you're ingesting that you are aggressively causing cell death mm -hmm. over um, and over and over they're over. not changing it every mm -hmm. time someone places an order for fries they're using it all day long over right. and heating it over right. and over and our children are experiencing this and so i always tell people um Disease begins in two ways. Yes, in the gut, but it begins in deficiency or toxicity. That's the way it happens. Mm -hmm. And so when you are yeah. not counter um, counteracting against these free radicals, which is really junk, and so you're not getting enough of your those phytonutrients, those live enzymes, um, food that's alive, fruits and vegetables that are living, bring you that life. They bring you those enzymes and that vitality. Um, so that would be step one, fighting free radicals. Number one, get rid of the processed foods. Bonus, you'll lose weight that way as well. Mm -hmm. There you go. Just so it's clear, because some people, when you hear the word free radicals, it's still not clear. They're atoms. They're very, very small. Mm -hmm. They're minute in the system. Mm -hmm. And they are not, you know, like, it's not tangible maybe to you, but 
they're so small in the systems, but they cause the aging. They cause all the dis cancers. And so free radicals is extremely important. So when you hear people talk about antioxidants or foods that um, kill, destroy, diminish free radicals, that's where you need to take notice. And that's, there's so many things that this team here would present to you. And then you'll, hopefully you'll contact them after this directly to find what can I do to reduce besides oils, what foods like bioavailable foods, like Laura says. Yes. Anything? No, um, vegetable oil is just out. It shouldn't even be on the shelves is, is mm -hmm. my opinion. Um, you know, we talk about free radicals and uh, most of them are dangerous, but there are, there are free radicals that are necessary for our body cells to kill off the invading bacteria. But these, you know, with what Joanna and Laura said, what I want to do is add the oxidative stress, which is, you know, from free radicals is one of the most important um, pathogenic mechanisms for both the neurodegenerative diseases, such as Alzheimer's, or Parkinson's and acute conditions such as stroke or traumatic brain injury. And Alzheimer's is at an all time high and it's over 50, the number is up to over 50% of, of men and women over the age of between 80 and 85 are developing Alzheimer's at a very rapid pace. So there's something going on out there that needs to change. Uh, no question uh, about that. Uh, moving it, moving along. And again, if anyone has any questions about what we talked about, um, I think it goes without saying just the fact um, I was going to bring up portion control. Um, I know that Joanna, you can certainly speak to that. I can speak to because I eat six times a day and I, I don't know mm -hmm. how many times you eat a day, but Yes. The whole idea, and let's just, we'll, we'll finish off um, a couple more topics, but I want to talk about portion control because uh, I think we've been given, uh, especially in the U.S., um, a disservice by going to the restaurants that be the biggest platters, that uh, give you the all-you-can-eat buffets, that give you the, the notion that they're going to uh, give you the biggest plate of spaghetti and you're going to do your best to eat it. Where, you know, some people like me, immediately I ask for the doggy bag because I want half to eat there if I go out and half at home. But Joanna, let's just, let's just, let's just kind of wrap up over here with some portion control discussions. Mm. You know, it's really interesting to me. I was an intermittent faster before intermittent fasting was even a word. Mm -hmm. I would wake wow. up in the morning and I just wasn't hungry. And I decided to follow my body's natural rhythms. I don't think anything's wrong with that. As I said, we are all unique, but for me, it did not, it did not work. So I wouldn't eat until like noon. Right. And I'd have two meals a day, but after that last meal, I would be grazing hungry because my body did not get the nourishment it really needed. Right. Then I found this program where I'm eating within an hour after I wake up and every two and a half to three hours after small meals, steady, steady, steady. And then at night having a, uh, make sure that I have a protein, a vegetable and measure, you know, measure my portions, actually weigh it, look at it, you know, and there's something about mindful eating when you're feeding your body exactly what it needs without overfeeding your body, you don't feel stuffed. You don't feel bloated. You know, you're eating, you know, foods that are actually doing uh, your body a favor, right? It wasn't until I started incorporating those healthy habits of eating and feeding my body small meals that the weight started dropping off. I started this in April of this year, I had put on more weight with COVID and I already had weight on me and I started eating this way and the weight is just coming off 60 pounds later from April, right? I'm going to continue eating this way my whole entire life because you guess what? I feel good. You know, I am feeding my body and fueling my body in a way that I never have. And I never thought eating more often would be the trick to do that. But it steadied out my blood sugar. 
which is the most important thing, you know, my body knows it doesn't have to wait for food. It knows that it, my metabolism is working again because I am feeding and fueling my body with healthy food that is giving it the opportunity to say, oh, we don't have to hold on to this. She's feeding us every two and a half hours. And it's it's almost miraculous for me because at 68 years old and struggling with weight from the time I was in my late 20s till recently, I mean, I've yo-yoed, yo-yoed, yo-yoed. And um, now I know the secret for me. And that's the secret. And I know Lainey and I are on this. We We do this. Is it, is it your time to eat? Is it your time to eat? I have an app that reminds me, but it's the, it's the best thing I have ever done for myself. So. Um, well, just, I, I know yeah. that. Thank you. I was going to say, I know Laura can attest to uh, that next is about that metabolism and, you know, and, and it's that trust that you give to your own body of cooperating. Like you said, Joanna, like, yeah, okay, I'm going to feed you that. And, and there's no worry, you know, there's no worry because you, continuously feed it. So I would love for you to touch on that, Laura, next about portions, metabolism, mm -hmm. you know, intermittent, you know, eating so often to me, it's likening, you know, adding furnace, you know, kindling to a fire. So the metabolism's always, mm -hmm. the fire's always roaring. Your metabolism's always burning. Yeah. I'm coming from a little bit of a different place. I eat whenever I'm hungry, but it's probably not good. But so a couple of things. First, when I was becoming an herbalist, one of the, the greatest books I ever read was called Eat to Live. And so mm -hmm. one of my sessions is called instead of um, living to eat, we need to flip that switch and um, sort of train our mind to realize that we're actually eating to live. And so that's number one. Um, as far as... Um, digestion, metabolism, and traditional Chinese medicine, we learn to chew your food until it's liquid. And so yeah. we, we are not accustomed to that. We eat, we, we eat when we're hungry. A lot of times we wait till it's too late. And so we start having digestive issues. But um, one of the things that we can do is spend more time beginning the digestion in your mouth and chewing your food thoroughly the way we are supposed to. If you watch animals, they do not inhale their food. So we kind of um, mess up our digestion by doing that. Lastly, as far as and portion, talking. I'm sorry, and talking while you're eating. You yeah, know? exactly. So conscious eating, which is what, mm -hmm. what you guys were talking about. Um, when I was sick, I hired a nutritionist out of Denver who had cured herself um, from an incurable disease. And <clears throat> she taught me some ways of eating and it was small meals um, time your meals, this sort of thing, get, get your exercise daily. One of the things that I've learned as time goes on is to switch your plate up. So portion control looks to me a little bit different than to everybody else. What it looks like is your plate is 75 to 85% vegetables mm -hmm. and a little bit of protein thrown in there. If you want that wild rice, if you want the quinoa, if you're having an exception and having pasta, then it's condiment size. It's not your whole plate. It's condiment mm. size. And when we talk mm. about condiment, that's what? Two or three tablespoons or maybe a little bit more depending on your metabolism. That's how I view portion control. Mm. The reality right. is the heavier the food is that you eat or the more junk, it sits in you like a rock. You feel like crap. You want to go take a nap. Um, when you eat salads and vegetables, it's a smooth digestion. You don't feel icky. Um, so the portion control works like a smooth running machine in that way. Beautiful. Jeff, want to add, great. add yeah. anything? Yeah. Yeah. Laura, you've got, um, similar to me, I, I do the, the hand theory and, um, as a plate and yeah. the whole hand is more of, um, fruits and vegetables. And then this section here in the palm is your protein. And yes. then, um, you've got, you know, this circle here is, um, your fats. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of how I've been gauging. And uh, if you want to say something, add to what Joanna said, something about supplementation. You know, our, our farmlands today are so depleted of its nutrients and the earth has its own microbiome. And these plants thrive to um, live and um, grow from the earth's microbiome. And it's not happening today. So... Fortunately, unfortunately, whatever, however you want to look at it, 
there is great supplementation out there that is necessary because we're not getting, as Laura said earlier, we're not getting the nutrients from the foods that, um, or we're not getting enough nutrients from the foods that we're already eating. So, um, you know, people uh, should start looking at that because that will um, be an, an additive to what they're already consuming, but at a more potent level. And, and uh, I, I used to buy supplementation all the time. It worked, it didn't work. But what I've learned is that if it's science, make sure it's science-backed clinical trial and make sure that you can see the documentation that backs up the clinical trials because there's a lot of garbage mm -hmm. out there. Yeah. Um, because we, we only have, as I, as I said earlier, one chance to feed this body and have it live um, optimally. Beautiful. Wow, I've learned so much tonight. I'm so grateful for all of you and all of your wisdom and experiences. Uh, what I'd like to do is just share with the audience, whether they're watching live or they're going to watch this later, uh, maybe some uh, some final thoughts from each of you. Uh, any special offers you'd like to provide? A little bit more about your business, and um, again, just you know, some final words of wisdom, uh, Joanna. I just you know want to tell people to take take the kind of care of their body like they do their cars. You know, people get their cars checked on, it's oil changed, the tires rotated and balanced. And sometimes they put more effort in their cars than they do their own body. Well, a car you can trade in and get a new one anytime. But this body, for this incarnation at least, we're stuck, right? So to honor our bodies, learn what works for you. Learn what makes you feel really, really good, vital, energetic. Learns what, learn how to feed yourself so that you can share your love with others. Because when we're feeling sick and miserable, we don't have it in us to share you know, with others our time, our love, our energy. And so for me, that became my why, right? I had to find my why. And my why is my children. You know, I don't want to be uh, uh, elderly and sick, right? I want to take care of my body now so I can avoid that as much as I possibly can, right? And so I found that why, that why is deep enough within myself that um, every day I get to choose. And if I decide that I want to have a little indulgence, you know, a little chocolate, you know, a little something... I just stop and I challenge myself. Do you really want this? And, and how much of it do you want? Are you going to allow yourself to do it? So I have this little thing where I just stop, challenge, and choose for myself. What is it that you really want to feed your body with? And what is it that your body's really craving, right? And do away with the guilt of a little indulgence here and there, because mm -hmm. I don't want to feel mm -hmm. guilty. I want to live my life. I want to be happy living my life. But I always go back to my why. What is going to make me feel more healthy, more vital, and more energetic? And I find that foods from the earth, foods from Mother Earth and real nutrition is what does that for me. I am offering a, a, a free health assessment for anyone that wants to contact me. My email will uh, is going to be given out uh, so uh, in the notes of this. So anybody can contact me and I would be happy to spend, you know, anywhere from uh, 30 minutes to, to an hour talking about their health and their weight loss issues. Excellent. Thank, Thank you, Joanna. You so yeah, so amazing. Uh, Laura. Thanks, Joanna. That was great. Um, so I, I agree with a lot of what Joanna said. This is our body. This is what we have. And we have been um, sort of in this belief system since we were young that most people grow older and get sick and have all of these debilitating imbalances, whatever they may be. And sure enough, we are seeing a lot of increases in chronic illnesses that are um, epidemic. And I believe now one in two children has a chronic illness. Um, we That belief system is wrong. We are not supposed to grow old and be sick and be bent over, you know, with weak bones and this sort of thing. 
So if I can emphasize anything for this particular panel, it would be, hey, um, just let go of the processed foods as much as possible. Concentrate on the foods that are going to feed your body, that are going to help you lose weight naturally. I don't teach any diets whatsoever. I don't subscribe to any diet, and I never have. But grasping on to the foods that give you life, these are all these foods that are grown from the earth. Mother Earth gives us these fruits and vegetables for a reason. They um, begin to bring balance into our bodies and they will start letting that happen. Um, so for those of you that are watching, um, I am offering six free tips to start losing weight this week. And it's, it's not impossible. It's pretty easy. So I believe my email is going to be put up somewhere for that for you guys as well. So I hope you enjoy it. Wonderful, Laura. Thank you so much. All right, Jeff, bring us home. All right. Well, to add on to Joanna and Laura, who, you know, really hit it out of the ballpark there, uh, just to add on to that, I think uh, for me to the viewers out there and those who are going to watch the replay is hope and what if. Mm -hmm. Joanna and, and Laura, um, you know, said a lot of great things, but uh, those people who are out there who are sick and tired of being sick and tired of, of trying to figure out what's going in a broken system, they're, they're desperate. They're looking. I was looking. I was looking for that hope. And three years ago, I found that hope. And at that point, it's like, well, what if? What if I try it? And what if I don't? And I decided I've got nothing to lose to try it. And that's the same for those of you who are watching out there. There are um, protocols. There are options. There are things out there that do work and they're safe. And it's a matter of getting out of your comfort zone because so many people are in their comfort zone and are a little nervous to trying something different, okay? But uh, not only this panel, but all the other panels, you know, are providing value, direction, and information for all of us to think a little bit differently because we've been driven down a path of um, ill health and ill wellness and, you know, and, and not um, getting better. We continue to get worse and it's got to change. And you, those of you out there can be catalysts to those of us who are already doing that to ourselves. So I encourage you to think out of the box and take that initiative to um, get the help and get coached and get some direction and just go for it. You've got nothing to lose. You got a lot to gain. Uh, my offer is basically uh, I'm a certified holistic um, mental wellness coach, and I can provide a free mental wellness assessment with a 30-minute consultation to review the results on the website or on, excuse me, on the, the group of Holistic Chamber of Commerce. There will be a PDF file. It does have two product um, packs, and both of them address weight, both of them address energy, mood, motivation. Um, and working at the visceral fat level. I'll put that there. There's links in there. You can get the information. My contact information will be there available. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me. So thank you very much. And th thank you, ladies. It's been an honor. I'm humbled to be on this panel with all three of you. Mm. Uh, thank well, you. Well, Jeff said think out of the box, but I'm going to also have you think inside the box. <laughs> uh, Joanna and I proudly co-authored the Food Healing Oracle deck, and this is a really special project that we feel blessed to be caretakers of bringing information out. And whether you're familiar with Oracle or tarot cards, or you can look at them as 60 uh, fruits, vegetables, herbs, and spices that are uh, food flashcards that give you a deeper understanding of the foods and how they relate to your chakras and how they relate to nature's five elements and how Mother Earth intended you to eat them and consume them and the whys. There's a lot of whys. And we also provide you some real world nutrition components that we talked about here tonight. We talked about oils. We talked about candida, free radicals, heart disease, diabetes, high cholesterol. That's all mentioned in cards. 
and the deck is vegan and gluten-free and non-GMO and organic. And uh, we want to give you 20% off if you would love to take a take a fun exploration into these cards to help your uh, wellness be achieved. And so there is a, a HCC20 is the code that you would use. And uh, that's at foodhealingdeck.com. So thank you. We were very happy to be sponsors of this panel tonight. It fit right in with what we do. Uh, I want to thank you all for being here. It was an honor to spend time with all of you and all who watched. Uh, live while we will be watching in the future again this is our last panel of the year it's been an honor all year long to meet the incredible members of HCC if you're considering membership please do go to holisticchamberofcommerce.com learn about our global organization that are now multiple countries all connecting and networking we have live uh, chapters uh, Laura's the chapter president of Hilton Head. I used to be the president in Southwest Florida in a couple different chapters. Uh, it's an excellent organization to get the information you need for a better life, as Jeff says, optimum wellness. Thank you to everybody. Have a blessed and safe and healthy holiday. Take care. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye.